Hey guys, and welcome to Petrolped. Now, all of us petrol heads will be big fans of the GR Yaris, I am sure. But what if you wanted a bit of that kind of GR Yaris style without going the full-blown four-wheel drive WRC homologation special? What if you just wanted something a little bit more economical, nippy in town, but with the style and the looks of the GR Yaris? Well, you could try one of them. That is the facelift GR Sport Yaris. Wonder if it's any good. So I'm here in Hampshire with Toyota UK to explore the new facelift Yaris and we have been blessed with the most beautiful weather. It is a stunning day today, sunny, cold and crisp and no rain. I've been battling with the elements the last few weeks, just so much rain and horribleness. It's nice to be out and about in a beautiful setting, a beautiful backdrop and not worry about getting rain on the lens. Now, I started off this video talking about GR Yaris, and it's worth putting it out there very, very early on in this film. The GR Yaris that we all know and love, and Yaris, they're very, very different cars, actually. GR Yaris is almost not a body panel on GR Yaris that comes from the normal Yaris, but the GR Sport version. Now of the range, this is not the top, there's a Premier edition which is the top spec car. This is the next one down, aimed at a, a sporty look and a sporty drive and I think it looks fantastic. Um, there are some nods to GR um, Gazoo Racing, you've basically got a little badge on here, you've got badging on the seats, badging at the rear, so people will know that it's the GR version, but that doesn't mean to say it's the souped up, massively powerful one. All these new Yaris's have a hybrid with 130 horsepower, so it's not, it's not a massively fast car, but I think for the for the use case that it's designed for, a little sporty, nippy city car, really, really interesting. And I do like the front end styling. I like these lights very much. But in the briefing we've just had, the thing that amazed me, firstly, they've been making Yaris since 1999. Where did that time go? And in that time, Toyota have made 10 million Yaris's. This is very, very important for Toyota as a car. They sell a lot of them. So, Let's jump around the back and have a look at the styling and then we'll jump on the inside and talk about the differences because the main things that are different with this facelift new Yaris for 2024 are safety systems, infotainment systems and then the drivetrain and economic way that this car will get you from A to B. Side profile wise, I think this car sits really nicely. Let's just briefly talk about wheels and tyres. So the entry level Yaris is actually on a 16 inch wheel. As you go up the, the range, it then goes to a 17 inch wheel, but the only car in the range with an 18 inch wheel is the GR Sport. And I think it's a really nice wheel design, diamond cut finish, but it's just one of those wheels that looks really easy to clean and sits nicely on the car. And then you come down the back, and, and for me, this is my favorite bit of Yaris. I love the sculpting in the rear door, this rear wheel arch, and the way you've got this little little spoiler on the top of the rear window, and then the, the way the lights are sculpted. I, I just think that looks very smart. And in this contrast, black roof, and then this paint here, this color is a, a unique to GR Sport, apparently. Coming around the back, there is a difference on the GR Yaris, the sporty one, you've got a double exit exhaust. This one's just got a single exhaust on the right hand side, GR Sport badging here, and then a little HEV badge because this is a hybrid electric vehicle. We do need to talk about how that works uh, and some of the different modes because it's, I think actually for the application of this car, city driving, occasional long driving, you don't want range anxiety. It's a very interesting powertrain. The only thing I would say about Yaris is it doesn't have the biggest boot in the world. There's enough in there for a, a few weekend bags to go away. I've kind of half filled the boot here with my camera bag and you do have some underfloor storage which is very useful. But if you were, I don't know, I think you might struggle to get something like a, a buggy for kids or golf clubs or whatever in the back. 
Um, I haven't got my bike with me. I think if I drop the seats, I might have to take both wheels off to get a bike in the back. So there is a restriction for me there. And that's with the GR Yaris, I did have a look and, and, and a, a think about buying one of those, but boot space was the big challenge for me and that car. But I think given what this car is designed for, I think the boot's probably good enough, but it is a handsome looking car from that rear three quarter view. Now I do question when you buy a car like this, how many times you're actually gonna wanna put adults in the back. And I already can see a bit of a logistics challenge because this seat is set for me as a tall driver. And actually to get in the back, um, if you hear a cracking, it's probably my legs breaking because it's, um, oh, uh, it's a case of legs either side of the seat. <laughs> it's pretty tight in here. It would be fine for a short journey to the pub or something. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a small, but look, this is a small city car. I'm not expecting limo levels of leg room. Plenty of headroom, actually. You think when you look at the side profile of the car, it does kind of come down quite a lot on the outside. So my head is just touching the, the, the headlining, but it's not too bad in here. Quite nice in here, you know. These seats, I think these seats look fantastic. And they're very comfortable. The touch points of the steering wheel, I think the steering wheel looks great. Nice big GR logo just there. So you know you're in the GR Sport version. You know you're in the kind of, just gives you a feeling that it's a bit more of a sporty, nippy car. Let me just start things up. Now, it is a hybrid, but the really cool thing about Toyota hybrids and having spent time in my RAV4 long termer is it's a hybrid, but you can run on pure EV and force it to run on pure EV, as long as the battery state is up to it. It's not a plug-in hybrid. You don't have to plug this car in. Um, and even if the battery starts to drop down, it will still optimize and try and use EV as much as possible. So it's about 130 horsepower in a small footprint car. Um, I'm sure that's gonna give a nippy enough performance. And then it's coupled to Toyota's eCVT gearbox. Um, so again, you're likely to find or, or experience a slightly higher revving nature to the engine, but that's all good. It's just the car doing what it's meant to do. Um, this big screen, um, the car supports uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay um, wirelessly. This screen though, it does, and it's exactly the same in the GR Yaris, it does look like it's aimed at pointing towards a left-hand drive uh, car. It, it's not kind of pointing at me. And I think that that's either just a bit lazy, not designing one, or, or if you are gonna put it in the middle, just put it completely square to the whole car. Then you don't have to worry about getting in it and looking like the screen's pointing at the passenger. It is quite big. The, the, the letterbox between the bottom of the rear view mirror and the top of that screen is quite small, but it doesn't feel quite as pronounced as in GR Yaris. But let me just talk very briefly about um, some of the changes and the range and pricing, and then we'll get out driving. I've got some notes on my phone, because in all of these events, you get given lots and lots of information. So the, the range starts with the Icon, and that is 22,600 pounds. On a PCP deal, you can get that from just under 300 pounds a month. And then the design is the car that Toyota expect to sell the most of. Those are both on 16 inch alloys and the design is 23 and a half thousand pounds. Then you get XL, um, which is the middle spec car. That's now on 17 inch um, alloys. Uh, that's 26,700. And then GR Sport that we're sat in, 18 inch alloys. And it's the GR Sport and the Premier that have the 130 horsepower engine. The, the other ones have a slightly less powerful engine. This GR Sport is, is just under 29,000 pounds. It's 28,800 pounds. And the Premier range topper, um, that is 28,925 pounds. So under 29,000 pounds. And you can get a PCP deal on one of these for just over 400 pounds a month. So I don't think that's, that's, that's too bad, you know, under 29,000 pounds in today's market. And as I said, the volume seller at 23 and a half thousand pounds, that's kind of there, there or thereabouts, I think. The main things the, the, in this um, facelift, it's not a, a new model, it's just a facelift model, 
is a, a new digital experience. So you've now got this nice big 12.3-inch uh, screen um, with uh, different navigation and different MMI, wireless Apple CarPlay. It's got a whole bunch of new safety features. Uh, it's got the annoying things like the speed bong, um, but it's also got um, over-the-air updates and lots of sa safety exit assist. So if you try and open the door and, and it senses a pedestrian or a car um, or a bike coming past, it won't let you open the door. I think that's quite cool. And then in the Premier Edition, you've got things like head-up display, JBL speakers and so on. So there's, it's mainly uh, the digital experience is new, um, more safety features, and then um, uh, the powertrain, this 130 horsepower powertrain in GR Sport and Premier. Um, so uh, I think we should go out and give it a go uh, and, um, and experience the car. Um, I've literally driven it from, from where we picked it up to this spot here to do some filming. So let's go and find some nice roads put it through its through through its paces and, and explore it for what it is it is not a sports car but it's a, a nicely trimmed nippy city car that you can have a bit of fun in and look cool while you're doing it okay we're going to start off by driving in pure ev mode now again if you're not familiar with hybrid drivetrains you, this is a HEV, a hybrid electric vehicle. Some people might call it a self-charging hybrid, but that normally upsets the internet. So I'm just going to call it a hybrid. But in a lot of hybrids, you, it will run in EV in slow running, but there's no way to force it into being just an EV, whereas Toyota platforms can. So you can run this as a pure EV. It's not a plug-in hybrid though so it doesn't have a huge battery pack so really the EV only running is just around town short journeys to really try and make it as efficient as possible as soon as you want to start driving more aggressively or more quickly then the EV only powertrain in this car just isn't up to that and the engine will kick in and you'll start to run as a hybrid when the engine's running then you've got some traction coming from the internal combustion engine you can charge up the battery pack and it kind of as you're going along it will build back up that battery reserve so that you can run in EV more and more but the bonus of a hybrid electric vehicle is you don't have to plug it in uh, to charge up the battery pack there's no kind of plug-in requirement the downside is that if you are wanting pure EV running, a lot of people will buy a plug-in hybrid because maybe they've got a 20 mile drive to work in the morning. And with a plug-in hybrid, you could probably do that there and back, especially if you could charge at work without ever having to use the internal combustion engine at all. So that's the, if you like, the benefit of plug-in hybrid. Downside is you wanna plug it in and they're more expensive generally and they're heavier. So this is, a, this is a nice compromise. As soon as the engine's running, which it is now, um, I've got a really nice response on the throttle. It actually feels quite nippy and quite sporty. I'm just driving along some nice country lanes, hoping that around the corner is gonna be some awesome North Shife-like B road, but I'm not so sure that's gonna be the case because I don't actually know where I'm going. I'm just, you know, wet finger in the air I'll go this way it looks quite nice but when you are driving down here the ride quality very good this road's not particularly great surface like every road in the UK at the moment it's a firm ride but it's not jarry and it's not jolty brakes work really really well even though I just half on mud half on tarmac nice stability there as that van came round the corner and then as we start to pull up the road little bit of grip issues from the very front end of the car but nice the, the nice thing it, it's such a dinky little car this it's very easy to place in the road um, and just feels like a, um, a nice small nippy little car now performance wise I'm not sure too many people buy a car like this because of its 0 to 60 time but it does 0 to 60 in just over nine seconds, which is still half a second faster than the pre-facelift version. And it's got a top speed of 109 miles an hour, which is, let's face it, still 39 miles an hour over the speed limit. So 
it's not an out and out sports car it's not a homologated rally car but it feels nippy and it feels fun and i think that for me is the most important thing about this car so as i'm just coming up to this t-junction i'm on electric power you can so whenever you're in that kind of creeping traffic it does tend to optimize the ev side of things so let's just step up through some drive modes. So I've talked about going in, forcing it into EV. I can go up into, I've got Eco Normal and Power. Um, so I'm gonna go into Power mode. And as soon as we're out of this 30 limit, we'll kind of put our foot down and just see, see what difference that makes to the overall sporty driving experience. Okay. So there's that high rev nature that you get with ECVT, if you got into the car and didn't really understand about how the CVT gearbox works, like I did when I first ran a RAV4, it might feel a little bit weird to you, but actually once you get your head around it, it, it you kind of forget it very, very quickly. Now we're at a little bit more pace. The car feels nice on the road. It's got a nice kind of grown up feeling to it. Suspension wise, is. It's pretty direct, to be honest. There's a little bit of roll and a little bit of um, yaw in, it, in the car, which is fine. And I'm sure when you tip it into a corner at more pace, that's going to help the front tyres just dig in a little bit, drag you around the corner a little bit more. Seats, in terms of look and comfort, they look great. They are comfortable. They are manually adjusted, though. There's a manual slider and then two levers on the side to get the back of the seat position and the height correct. They, they do take a little bit of adjusting to get into the right position. This seat was a little bit laid back for me to start with, but I think I've pretty much got it where I need it now. So the driving position actually is pretty good. Steering wheel has rake and tilt adjustment. I'd like it a little bit closer to me if I'm honest, but then that's a problem I get with lots of cars because my legs are so long, I have to have the seat quite a long way back and my arms aren't long enough. So I always feel a little bit stretched um, to the steering wheel. But in this power mode now, it's got a nice throttle response. And it goes around corners really well, <laughs> really well. So if you just plant your foot onto the throttle, it just takes a little bit of time for the engine just to spin up and the power to come in. But you get up to the speed limit quite nicely. And then there's a nice feeling on the brakes as well. So. Let's head on to a dual carriageway and just have a feel for uh, what it's like on a dual carriageway. I've got all the kind of um, adaptive cruise control things that you would want to make this car more usable for longer journeys. And up to 70. So it's, yeah, it's quick enough. It's quick enough for, for, the, for the type of car and the target market it's aimed at, I think it's definitely quick enough. Final impressions of the new facelift GR Sport Yaris. I really like it, actually. Um, I'm not so sure it would be a car I would buy personally. I'd, I'd probably spend an extra five to 10 grand and get the GR Yaris itself, um, but I get it completely. It would be interesting to see what the the top seller one is going to be like. Um, the one that uh, is sort of, tw I think, 22, 23,000 pounds is a really good price point for this car. Um, they, the GR Sport and the Premium, the two top spec ones, Toyota reckon that each one of those will only account for about 5% of sales. So it's, it's not the volume seller, but I can imagine it's that if you want, if you need that small, small footprint city car but you want a little bit more sporty styling um, and I guess this is not dissimilar to what Audi do with S line or BMW do with M Sport that kind of uh, you know mini do with JCW styling pack it's the same kind of the same kind of vibe going on here it's not got the performance but it's got the looks and, and I do kind of get that I like I like the external styling I like the wheels and I like the nods to GR. Um, the engine is, I think, 
Um, if you come into this car expecting a sports car, you're going to be disappointed. But it's got it's got enough turn of pace to put a smile on your face when the roads allow it. And I think the economy that you're going to get from this car, I've not driven it long enough. And also this car's it's, it's got only just got 400 miles on the clock, so it's not even run in. So I can't really give you an accurate. Um, uh, an accurate reading of, of what the efficiency of this car is going to be like in terms of miles per gallon but my gut feel says it's probably going to be pretty good especially in that urban drive cycle where you're going to be using the EV part of the drivetrain quite a lot uh, and then finally just just in terms of, of, of internally I think it's fitted out really nicely the screen pointing that way is annoying me um, but the fact that I can just do that and, and have Apple CarPlay straight away um, and it's a nice big screen to see, um, I like very much. Anyway, put in the comments what your thoughts are on the new GR Sport Yaris Hybrid. Um, but for now, I'm going to head back to Toyota and grab myself a cup of tea, I think. But I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrobed for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film. You take care, guys. Drive safe.